So we wrote this judgment and I'm interviewed, I'm president and I'm interviewed by these two reporters who have just come back from Priador and they say, no, no, there weren't detention camps. They were voluntary collection centers where Muslims were collected for their own protection and um, then they could exit uh, the Priador region. I was boiling. <laughs> I was boiling. Here we spent all this time, all these witnesses, all of this, this, this long judgment, 7,000 pages of transcripts. We have a mandate at the ICTY in the resolutions to help to bring about and maintain international peace and security. Now, how are you going to do that if you can't impress upon the people in the region, not the international legal community, but people in the region, what happened, give them a historical record of what happened? I felt like a failure. It was pretty judgment and we made all of these findings and it looks pretty, but it's not influencing people. So I said to myself, we've got to do something about it. Some of the judges rightfully felt that um, we're a court of law. It's not our job to deal with public opinion. And that's true typically in the United States because we're part of one integrated system, but we're not in, in the former Yugoslavia. So how are we going to dispel these myths? If people in the region don't understand what we're doing, how we're doing it, and that we're doing it fairly to the best of our ability, how can they be influenced by our judgments? The judgments are supposed to help to bring about reconciliation. They can't alone but they can begin the process by seeing that individuals commit crimes, not all Croatians, not all Serbs. Courts sometimes forget that there are people out there. You know, it's not just us, not just the judges and the law clerks. And we're writing these beautiful judgments and everyone will say, oh, what a brilliant person. I'm so glad that you put some flesh on international humanitarian law. I am too, but my question is, how did this help?